everybody. Welcome to our stream on July 14th, 2022. The game well, designer, Ken Tover. Oh, yeah, here. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm here as well. <laughs> she, she just, like, grabbed the mic. She's, uh, we, we've given her the pilot's chair today because I'm, I'm, I'm playing one-handed after, uh, a run-in with Griffin the Fourth. Yeah, Griffin the Fourth decided to uh, joust our lead designer, <laughs> and he broke a finger. It's so funny that it's so, like it's like topical. I like, know. <laughs> so he can't type. So I'm running the pilot's chair today. Had a jousting incident with the current king. <laughs> Griffin um, the Fourth could never hurt Raw. It and it begins <laughs> already <laughs> that quick. Started. That quick. Um, so welcome everybody. Yeah, welcome. Thank you so much for being here, um, Kathy. My uh, what are we calling you these days? Lead, lead developer. Lead developer. Kathy's here. Um, and myself, we're going to be going over. We've got a couple things for today. Um, primary thing is going to be a new artwork drop. Um, but we're going to uh, hang back on that a little bit because Ruben hasn't waited nearly long enough. Um, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, uh, in our, group, our Discord here, Mr. Ruben B has been begging for months almost a year at this point for us to acquire a fire faction artwork and the day has finally come for the first fire faction artwork so we're just gonna drag it out like five more minutes <laughs> i can taste ruben's excitement in the chat love it <laughs> um so yeah the first thing i want to talk about i've actually been having um this is this is a little bit more development business side and i kind of want to just bounce a couple things off of those of you who are in here um, ask for any input, any feedback, and just kind of, kind of, you know, this is this is part of the process. The reason, um, the part of the Patreon is to give you guys this inside look, and you know, have a have a group of people who can who can be part of the process. So um, I've been talking a lot with the different companies and trying to figure out what our um, method is going to be as far as printing goes. Um, you know, a year or two years ago, we were still debating whether or not this would be a collectible game or a uh, buy-the-box, you know, living card game, copyright, uh, Fantasy Flight games, knockoff, whatever. Um, but now, fast forward, and I, th I think the bulk of people who we've spoken with, um, and, and, and ultimately the decision was made to make it a collectible product, where you're buying booster packs, you're cracking them open, you've got your different rarities, all, all the things that, we, you know, we love as card gamers. Um... And now I am figuring out how to make that a reality. And first and foremost, it's tough. The printers that are out there doing this type of thing um, are really hard to find, first off. And then once you do, they'll tell you things like, oh, yeah, we can, we can you know, make you some booster packs. Our minimum order quantity is, uh, you know, 2 million or something. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just not really feasible for obviously an indie company to order 2 million booster boxes. That's just like not, that's not a thing. So with that territory, there are some questions that I wanted to kind of bounce off you guys. That was, that was a long spiel to set up a couple of... Are these the questions that you also wanted to ask me? Partially. So yeah, you can, okay. you can listen in right now. Um, I'm listening. Yeah, yeah. You can be, you can be a part of it right now. Um, one okay, of the, Avery. Avery just Sorry. joined. Nice. Yep. Awesome. We got some questions that I think you'll be particularly interested yep. in helping us out with. So one of the big things that Kathy and I have spoken about, and this was, uh, this is actually one of the bigger hangups I'm having right now is, is, is incorporating some very minimal mapping. And by that, I mean, I want to guarantee players a shrine in their booster box. If players buy a booster box, I want them to walk away with at least one shrine. Um, keep in mind that the shrines are epic rarity, so like we, we obviously don't want them to be all over the place. Um, but I want it to be this situation where if a, if a player picks up the game and decides to jump in, I think the natural like entry level is going to be give me the essence pack, give me a box. That's kind of like the, the minimum quantity required to really get going. Um, and in that event, if they buy a box, then there should be like kind of like a guarantee, I guess, that there will be a shrine in there so that they can build a deck. Yeah, because um, you can't play without at least one shrine. Right. And this is separate from the idea that we might make some type of a starter product, a starter deck, a pre-con yeah. deck. Like, that's that's a separate issue that we will conquer in due time. Shrines in the essence pack. Shrines in the essence pack. I don't know if we can produce that. We Yeah, that's... We are hard-fast keeping plastic and cardboard separate. That's really yeah. going to be... 
Because you start having to take two different production companies and mix them together. Yeah. And the cost per unit goes up by so much just yeah. by mixing plastic and cardboard. Um, box topper. We talked about box toppers. Why did we get away away from box toppers? So I think that the problem with box toppers is that there just aren't that many epic cards. So if you move the shrine to a box topper, then the epic rarity becomes really weird where in order for players to like buy enough boxes to get one of each shrine as a box topper, they're looking at getting like many duplicates of basically oh, all yeah. of the epics. I remember us talking about that because our original like rarity mapping counted the shrines in the epic slot. Yeah. Anyway, what's your question? Um, so my question is, basically what AJ's kind of, kind of kicking around right now is the concept that... Um, Hold on a second. AJ, you're, you're missing uh, the bigger point. If we take shrines out of the epic distribution, then you'll get too many copies of epics when you're opening your random packs. He says he didn't miss that point. Okay. okay. Basically the question is... Um, I think that the company I spoke with today, you get a rare, okay. Uh, I mean, I, wanna, I, I don't want to like talk over you. I'll, I'll come back to your, type out your thought and then I'll come back to you once I kind of finish my pitch here. The company I thought I talked to today, I think is capable of doing what I want, which is basically allowing shrines to be part of the collectability. They are meant to feel epic. They are meant to feel special when you open them. They're meant to be part of the story and have their names and all that stuff, you know, uh, preserved. Um, do not do that. Okay. The gameplay side of that, though, creates a scenario where yes, there's a there's like a functionality that has to um, be accessible. You have to be able to provide shrines for the players, but you also want them to be exciting. So how do you balance that? And my, my big question was, in the event that I cannot map one shrine to a box, if that's not necessarily possible, but shrines showed up as just an a, a equal distribution within the epic card slots, like let's say you get three or four, whatever epics per box, so likely you will see a shrine, like, mm -hmm. a, like one out of every three, it's but, it's not not a, but it's not like a guarantee. Um, how critical do you guys think that that data point is? I think it's pretty huge. I think that if a player buys a box and just doesn't get a shrine, they you just can't play. They just can't play. They have to go find somebody to trade one, or they have to go back and buy more. And we've talked about making shrines more accessible in other ways by using them as promotional materials, right. you know, as much as possible. But that can't be the answer. It can't be the only know? way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it feels as a new player. Yeah, I, I agree with yeah. that. I, and that's, that's kind of where I'm at. If I bought all that product and couldn't play because I didn't open a shark, right. I'd be pissed. Right. No, I agree. How did Force of Will do it with Force the of Will had a ruler in every box. You were guaranteed open. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how. I don't know who they talked to and how they made that happen. Who but Force of Will? I don't know. <laughs> I thought you looked in all the big ones. And told you that this is not easily accessible information. Uh, it is not something you, you can just, just go find. No. Huh. I'd like you to Google like who printed Flesh and Blood. <laughs> And see what it kicks you back. Because it is not... I'm so curious to have this go up on YouTube and I yeah. just be like, Oh, I got you, fam. Oh, I wish. I wish that that was all it took. I know, for that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe um, just call 073 knows who... He honestly Forceful. might. He honestly he might. They should tell you. Yeah, that's just the call thing. Forceful. Just, just hey. call him. Hey! Hey, Japan! <laughs> I realize it's whatever time of the day it is right <laughs> yeah. now for you, but if you could please. <laughs> um, but yeah, obviously it's doable. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I also kind of get the feeling that it, it's doable with these really large printing companies that want you to order 10 million units. Right, right. And the indie game type companies offer less services as, you know, yeah. Scene. Yeah. We'll see. But yeah, I think it, it sounds like from the chat that like you have to be able to be guaranteed. This is the way I was leaning. I was just kind of curious like what you guys thought about this of like how... Uh, that's not entirely true, AJ. That's not entirely true. Force World did have really bad, like, print run, like, artifacting where the packs would look really similar. Um, but it wasn't... It's it's not like a sheet becomes a box because that's like... The, the printer's sheets are set up for, like, a set number of cards. 
Um, I had this whole conversation with the guy today, and it's there's a, there's a big formula that you go through where you have to get basically the least common denominator, divisor, or whatever, of like all the different types of cards that you want to include. And then they can make, not a sheet, but like a list of sheets that covers everything. Interesting. So you ha- like that list of sheets ends up spanning many boxes, many packs, etc. But that that's that's part of what I kind of learned very recently, to be honest. Um, at least the way this company does it. So what was another question that you had? The second question I had is foiling. Um. Don't tell me we can't get foils now. I don't know how easy foiling is going to be to do, again, as a smaller company. Um, mm. The, <laughs> I mean, AJ, I'm kind of with you. I think that, like, alt arts and, like, alternate frames and, like, different treatments can at times be downright better than foiling. Um, but, again, this goes back to a lot of the conversations I've been having lately uh, when you throw in the process required to make a run of packs, right? Um, you can imagine if, let's say there's 11 cards in a pack, a run of packs takes up, you know, X boxes, fine. And you, you make the, um, kind of the, 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 you code the sheet, kind of what AJ was saying, to encapsulate all those boxes, fine. And then you do it again, and then you, that's how you stack up boxes. Um, if you then take that same sort of formula that you created and run it through the printer and create foil sheets, but then say, hey, we're just going to put one card per box, you've now, you are now requiring 11 times as many boxes to consume one run as before because you have to consume that entire foil mm-hmm. run. So when you... St- get into the conversation of what's a minimum order quantity have to look like, what does um, a successful Kickstarter campaign look like for Flawed, I don't know if foiling can be included just because yeah. of like the size required to consume a print run of yeah. foils. And it might be worthwhile just to get the first set off the ground and get the game out there to not do foils for set one, and then assuming the game takes off the way it needs to yeah. for set two, then you might be in a position where you can use a company like... Don't do, Okay, AJ's yeah. saying that a lot of card game Kickstarters don't have foils as their, in their yeah. first stuff. Okay. Which is fine, I think. I, 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 I get down with that. Like that I, I, I'm, I'm stuck in the space of, like, I know there are players who are, like, make or break it on foils. Like, that's something they really care about. They really want the, like, alternate treatments, whatever. Um, it doesn't mean they can't be available other ways. True, true, yeah. true, true. But these are all interesting talking points for, like, look behind the scenes of, like, what goes into printing the cards. Yeah. And I think it would be a good idea, uh, maybe after the stream or some other time, to, like, jump up in general chat where everyone can yeah, actually gives, talk gives out loud sure, sure, sure. and, like, bounce some ideas around. Yeah, foiling does add a cost. Yeah, I agree with that. And, and this is, this is like I said, this is kind of just a presentation of, like, some of the stuff we're learning right now. I, I, I mean, it's maybe not the most glorious conversation but it's it's part of the process and i i wanted to kind of express it to you guys just let you know kind of where our heads are at and like yeah. what we're working on right now um because it you know it's coming like kickstarters yeah. around the corner we're like less than five months away from when we plan to have mm-hmm. the campaign go off so i i need to start answering these questions and really getting yeah. them getting them in place but um yeah maybe that one of the things we can do we actually have the feedback channel up top and then the general channel as well maybe we can post some like actual questionnaires and see what people yeah. people think I see Nick. Hi, Nick. You want to see some art? Oh, just in time. Just in time. Just in time. So, um, yeah. so yeah, we can, we can, we can, I guess, pull back from that development space for now. And Ruben, <laughs> Rawls like no. Ruben, Ruben, Ruben. You ready? The time is here. The time is now. We're gonna show it. I want to ask Ruben since he's. Again, the one who's been at waiting for this for all this time. Ruben, you know that there are, what, three fire cards? Yeah, what are they? In the, the demo deck. There is Dying Breath, Eternal Flame Soldier, and Siege Master. Are the only mono fire cards, right? Yes, there's also a Hatred, but it's a dual color yeah. card. We're going to give you that one for free. It's not Hatred. So, Ruben, which of the three do you think it is? Which one do you want it to be? I'm just, I actually want, like, I'm curious. He's typing... He wants it to be Eternal Flame Soldier. He wrote EFS. Listen, we can't call it EFS because Ken's idiot self over here named another card Elite Fire Soldier. Also EFS. Which is also EFS, so we're going to rename We're going to rename EFS. Because I really want to call.
Eternal Flame Soldier, EFS. Boom! <laughs> Listen, y'all. How good does that car look? I want this on TTS tonight. Yeah, it's not happening. But I want it. Yeah, it's, that's a lot of work. I played a game with a new player. Yo! <laughs> I played a game with a new player last night and played Eternal Flame Soldier, like knowing that this was the one we were going to spoil. Yeah. And I was just like, this girl can't wait. This can't girl wait. Looks so can't good. wait. Can't wait. This girl looks so good. Uh, so, yeah, another absolute banger by fan favorite Robert Nix. Um, this is his third artwork. He also did. Uh, elite Fire elite? Soldier. No, sorry, no. sorry, sorry. <laughs> Earth's Elite. God! <laughs> you got to change the name on Elite Fire Soldier. <laughs> yeah, Elite Fire Soldier's got to Earth's go. Elite. I was pausing to say it because in my brain was like, don't say Elite Fire Soldier, don't say Elite Fire <laughs> He did Ursula and um, Life Cycle Warden. Life Cycle Warden. Yeah. And now he's busting it out with Eternal Flame Soldier, just killing it. I was not, I mean, I want to say I'm not surprised that he killed it, but I was still surprised when I got it. I was like, oh, it's fantastic. It's just great. It's just wonderful. Anyone else getting Get Over Here vibes from Scorpion? Nice, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this, uh, honestly, just... I like when he sent me this sketch, right? So, I he started this July. I don't no, know. no, no. He started this towards the end of June. He was, he was, he was yeah. We we picked him up in the end of June. That's right. So this has been this has been a couple weeks now. But he sent me the sketch. Um, <laughs> Bailey said, "Years of waiting, Ruben. All you gotta say is looks pretty good." <laughs> yeah, Ruben, come on. You he spelled be a little it correctly. Okay. He is true, true. 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 <laughs> he meant a few words, but he means them by God. He spelled them all right. <laughs> um, so he sent me the sketch, and there were a couple like little details that I needed to like crunch out with him. But the the first sketch, like when he had that again, we all know that he loves this this action shot, these postures with a lot of movement mm -hmm. and like. But that's all why that. we pick him for and, oh, it's, like it's this. fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it's really really good. Um, but when he sent me that sketch, I'm just like. Oh my god, the chain is gonna like hit the text box. I like it already pictured. I could like already tell. You, like looking at the artwork, like you can visualize all the mm -hmm. movement of that weapon, but when you see it like with the real D three D, it your brain just like creates even more action just because yeah. of the layers. I wonder if this should actually be behind over here. I tried it both ways. Yeah. Um I can show you it both ways. Okay. But I thought it looked it looked weird. Like it didn't make sense. Like why would it be behind here? And, uh, you'll have to see it. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um I did try it both ways though. You can take a look. Um, uh, I love the you told them about the like scars. So this is so uh, a lot of the stuff that you guys might not know, we'll do a we'll do a quick sidebar on some lore for the Eternal Flame Soldier here. The Eternal Flame like sect is sort of um the religious portion of the fire tribes like government right so the fire tribes government has a number of uh like segments uh, branches however you want to call it um and inside of the fire faction yes the, yes i'm in the military um all of those separate factions are just branches of quite literally the military and like the head of each military unit makes up like a bigger council and that's how everything gets kind of decided the the entire faction is so militaristic and so focused on that type of thing um but but the eternal flame portion is the section that yes they are a military group they are you know um taking part in missions and like doing things of that nature yes but then like their their backbone is rooted in the idea that like the fire is more important like like the, the literal reason that their people worship the fire is because um, they live in a northern, like, harsh climate like this. The fire is, you know, kind of their lifeblood. It's what allows them to, to stay alive and live where they do live and that type of thing. And then this group takes it, like, one step further. And you get this sort of, like, um, magic sort of adherence where they're going in and, like, learning, like, spells and rituals and, like, fortifying their weapons. And you can see her hands are all scarred up from, like, doing these different things. And she's got the brand on her leg and, like, all these little nods to the idea that like she's she's juiced up on the fire like there's there's mm -hmm. she's more powerful because that like fire is quote unquote in her right like it mm -hmm. like in a way and you can't tell it's kind of just because it's kind of small but her eyes are like red a yeah little bit. yeah um but but he 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 got a lot of that stuff in there he really hit the the concepts that i wanted um the chain weapon was a very intentional choice um stay tuned and future 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 art endeavors we might see a chain again i don't know some of you might know the card some of you might not 
Um, I actually can't picture what you're talking about. <laughs> so one of the really popular artworks that we have right now is the tandem of Underwater Spearman and Drown. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Where you've got the two artworks kind of playing off of each other perspective-wise. Um, I chose the chain for the Eternal Flame Soldier and the, the, the idea being that in the future, once we get to the point in time where we're acquiring art for everybody, we can do another sort of like double dip artwork where the Eternal Flame Soldier is the character or the weapon or whatever that's represented on the card binding chains. So she's going to actually be like wrapping somebody up like with her chain like on that artwork and it gives us another chance to create continuity with the story create the you know let the characters kind of play off of each other um you've seen it on like uh obviously griffin and the great oak both have x in them mm -hmm. etc um i think i've talked in the past about the card um sudden strength mm -hmm. is actually going to be the, the exact moment that griffin's pulling yeah, the earthquake. sword out of the roots earthquake is going to yeah. be that basically right after that moment um, I, I want the stories and the lore and the concepts to kind of be yeah. continuous. I want all that to be in there. So that was that was part of big big part of the choice as to why she has that as a weapon, but also just looks yeah. amazing. amazing. And I made a comment to Ken when I first saw it that the fact that she has very like little clothing on just further drives home like she's in a very wintry, obviously cold background, um, but is like so ingrained in the fire and just. The idea was we wanted her, the fire magic to be like within her that like she doesn't need to wear like thick garments that you would normally see in like a tundra type setting. Um, so it's just it's great. I like her little uh, little nose ring too. I like the little details. Oh, yeah. And I like how she has those like plates like in her scalp stuck to her head somehow. Oh, no, yeah, just, I think it's a reverse crown. I think is what a you're reverse supposed to crown. Yeah. Whatever. I like it. I don't know. Whatever Some it's kinda, supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> I'm into it. Um. But yeah, this is this is the big reveal this week. This is obviously like we've been we've been waiting. Ruben's been waiting a long time for a fire card. Um, this counts us down to. I don't know. I've lost track. This is like the fourth or fifth completed, like fully done artwork from the second deck, right? Oh, for the second deck, we have yeah. Fall of Shadows, Pillory, Knife Expert. This one. That's four. Is that it? That are completely done. I'm trying to think. I think it's just Obviously, I have a bunch more artists. Yeah, I'm like trying to... Trying to remember what's finished and what's almost finished. <laughs> There's a lot almost finished. Yeah. Like there was... Uh, no. Yeah, I think that might be it. So we have four so far? So we have four. So we have about eight to yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. There, there are 12 unique arts in each deck. So we have we have four out of 12. Yeah. yeah. Okay, nice. Um, and then do you want to show them the next? Slide? Yeah, so we got one more thing. And this is just kind of like a... Uh, we already sort of featured this artwork already, but I ended up reaching back out to Xavier and having him make a small edit, um, similar to what Megan did for the Momocon promo, where she mm -hmm. added a slight feature to make it kind of unique, make it look kind of cool. Um, and I had Xavier kind of etch in 2022 on the Crooked Cornerstone. Um, and we're gonna use this, I, th I think we mentioned it last week, but we didn't quite have it fully sorted what our plans were gonna be. We're gonna use this as our event promo um, for, 2022. for 2022. So as of right now, there are no plans to actually release the daytime art okay. outside of this yeah. 2022 version. So the original version that you saw before he had made the edit was just like the little kind of script writing on the side of the stone. Um, that's only going to be part of the night day like yeah. combo card yeah. for Patreon. And then this will be the actual daytime release um, for Hollow with Shadows 2022. with 2022. And then naturally the the standard night art is going to be the yeah. the card that comes in packs. So we actually already have this card in hand. We do. Here it is. I got them right here next to so, I promise it's there. <laughs> and so we will have this card available for sale for the rest of 2022 at any in-person event. So the first one we have coming up is on August 13th in Greenville, North Carolina for the Greenville Comic Con. Comic Con, yup. Um, and so if you... You can fit so many cards in this bad boy. Yeah. And then we'll have it with us for like PAX Unplugged, but we're also yeah, gonna yeah. have a PAX Unplugged specific card. <laughs> um, and then if we do any more uh, like pop-up markets yeah. or little conventions, we'll always have it with us. Yep, it'll just be, I, we, we kind of, I think we talked about this on stream a couple weeks ago, and I think the process of ordering those like event specific cards for just mm -hmm. one event is like a little bit daunting and it's a little bit tough to estimate how many you need and like mm -hmm. pay the money up front, et cetera. So um, just kind of ordering this 2022 card, I've got a good stack from right here to get us started with Comic-Con, et cetera. And then 
we will be able. I can just basically order more of them, like as 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 time goes on, um, depending on how quickly they're selling, yeah. whatever. That was definitely um, something we learned from. Mobile yeah, Mobile Car definitely taught us a little bit of lesson. Yeah, I we mean, sold a bunch of Mobile Car. We sold a ton. We sold quite literally yeah. like hundreds of cards. Oh, we did, and we still over sold slash gave away to some of our of our needs. brilliant um, help that was there with us. But hey, you got paid something. I'm, I'm telling you, I was I was happy to do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, even 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 with that, it was. I mean, we did miss the mark. Like we over ordered. It would have been nicer to be able to turn around and use those at another event, mm -hmm. like we'll be able to do with the yeah. 2022 card. Um, but that you know, that's again lesson learned. Um, it's not even like it was that bad. Momocon was awesome. It was a hum know, yeah, humongous yeah. success. Like everything went you know, swimmingly, but, um, always trying to improve, make, you know, make it better next time. So, um, but that's the street. You got something else? I was just gonna say as a final note on that, not to say that we won't do the exclusive card again, because we, we do want to have card? like a card that is for one event. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we want to do it at PAX. Yeah. We want to do it at PAX. We're already exactly. planning on doing yeah. it for PAX. Yeah. PAX is going to have so much. I know. I want to do enamel pins. I know. Sweet. Real sweet event. <laughs> She wants to have demo decks like on hand. Yes, I want to have them. demo decks on the shelf. I don't know how many to order though, because if our Kickstarter is going, like, who cares about demo decks? I mean, but people have asking. People want know. to play it now. Kickstarter is a many month, if not year long process that's true. from start to finish. It's, so yes, it's definitely. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and that's that's just the accepted way that it works. Mm -hmm. I mean, that you know, so we're definitely going to have the art for both decks fully fleshed out for packs. Absolutely, hundred percent. We might have the deck, the both deck, finished by like next month. If, if, if all the artists that we're talking to, like, are progressing at the pace that I want them to, we could actually have by the end of all August. 12 in hand by the end of August. We won't have them in time for uh, Greenville Comic Con. We definitely won't have them yeah. printed before Greenville Comic Con. And Miss yeah. Mary, I don't know if she's still listening passively, if you hear in Orlando anything about little nerdy comic conventions, <laughs> pop-up markets, whatever, let us know. You might be able to con us into coming and visit you. Con, <laughs> get it, All right. Uh, <laughs> so I'm glad you guys came for all the dad jokes and terrible, terrible puns and stuff. Yep. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. <laughs> wait, wait. Let me tell one more joke to sign off the stream. Okay. Uh, how come the pepper couldn't finish his archery lesson? He didn't habanero. Hab habanero. Yep. I was. Yep. Okay, well, um, with that, we're going to end the uh, <laughs> recording. Uh, if this video gets, like, flagged and removed for some reason, we'll all know <laughs> why. <laughs> um, but thank you again all for being here. Uh, you know, huge, huge shout-out, as always, to the entire Patreon. Like, couldn't do it without you guys. Um, just infinite appreciation for you guys being a part of this process. And it's really coming together. We're really yep. doing it. I'm we're getting really excited. We're going to have a lot excited. of art this month. Um, so, you know, stay tuned. But again, thank you to my co-host. Thank you for all, for all being here. And mm -hmm. we'll see you guys next time.